Hey, uh, good morning, fourth period. Uh, I'm sorry I'm not able to join you today. I'm actually currently at a meeting downtown with the other AP Calculus teachers in the EBSC working on some things to finish up the school year and get you guys ready to uh, master that AP exam coming in May. Uh, but the, the learning commences. We will carry on without uh, me, uh, but you guys will do a great job today. I'm on page 84 of the ISN. We started building this on Wednesday after the test. Uh, we're talking about definite integrals today. And a lot of the information on this blue sheet, you guys were able to get in the ISNs before we ended our time together on Wednesday. We got the definition of the definite integral down pat. Uh, we stated that the definite integral was just the, the exact signed area between f of x and the x-axis from x equals a to x equals b. Uh, you guys stated that this really, this notation looked a lot like the indefinite integral, the antiderivative, uh, with one exception that the uh, we had the limits listed here. So the a and the b refer to where do you start adding area and where do you stop adding area. We still call this function the integrand, um, and this is still this is still you know the integral sign with the differential, the dx at the end. They're still like bookends. Once you uh, taking care of the process, that goes away. Okay, uh, We briefly talked about how to calculate definite integrals, uh, and we discussed that um, it's important to always start at the lower limit at x equals a, this value here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to count area in the direction of and until you get to whatever number the upper limit is b. And what we said on Wednesday was that if you count from left to right, so this picture here that I told you I would tell you more about, today's the day I'm going to tell you more about that picture. Uh, if you start here at A, uh, and we're counting to the right, or if B is a number to the right of A, if we're counting from A to B, then the area above the axis counts positive, and the area below the axis counts negative. We always start at that lower limit, always start at A. If the number b, if the upper limit happened to be a number over here before a, then you're going to count to the left. You know, you're going to go this way. And in that situation, the area above the x-axis counts negative, and the area, area below the axis counts positive. We're going to practice this a lot today. And you probably had a chance to get all of that on page 84 on Wednesday. What we didn't have a chance to do really was to talk about these properties of definite integrals. So that's kind of where we need to jump off then here today. So if you get inside that last tab, uh, there are some properties of definite integrals that we need to know. The very first one here, and I didn't have anything fancy to say about it, is that if I ask you to find the area under f of x from a to a, meaning if the upper and lower limit are the same, well, that area is just zero. And if you think about it, if you don't have a region of x values to look under, there would be no area that would fit under the curve. You'd have like a width of zero. It doesn't matter how high that area is. The product of the two is zero. So the integral, integral from a to a of f of x dx is zero. This next one is kind of important. It's a property that you can use sometimes to make a problem a little bit easier to calculate. Uh, the integral from a to b of a function is the same as the opposite of, notice the minus sign, the integral from b to a, meaning if I switch the order of the limits, the sign of the integral changes. This third property here is just like what property we had for indefinite integrals. If this, this k here is some constant, uh, then the integral from a to b of a constant times f of x is simply that constant times the integral from a to b of f of x. So just like with an indefinite integral, you can pull constant multiples of a function out. The other two properties on this page are um, a little bit more complicated looking, but I'll show you that they basically um, are helpful. The, the first one here says that if you want the integral from a to b of a sum or a difference of two functions, then all you simply need to do is to integrate f from a to b and integrate g from a to b 
and then add or subtract the two. There's a missing minus sign here uh, that would fit the case. You know, if it's if you if you had f of x minus g of x, then you, the integral of f minus the integral of g is what you would need to do. In other words, this is another property that we had for indefinite integrals. Uh, you can find definite integrals by breaking it up term by term as well. And then this last one is a little confusing, possibly. I want to try and talk you through what's going on here. It says that the integral of a function from a to b plus the integral of a function from b to c is the same as the integral from a to c of f of, f of x. Essentially eliminating that middleman b. So like if I were integrating from 0 to 3, and then integrating from 3 to 8, uh, all I'm saying here is that that would be the same as the integral from 0 to 8. So adjacent integrals can be added together to form one big integral. Okay. Um, so there's an idea of some of the properties that we're going to use when trying to find definite integrals. Um, I hope you now have everything you need uh, on page 84. Uh, what we'll do is we'll stop this video, and in the other video that we're going to look at today, we're going to practice on the white handout that you grabbed today. That's going to eventually go on page 83, and we want to practice finding some definite integrals using area.